technology. So I wanted to see if they could develop something for me, for me in terms of being able to use it. They showed me an image, or sort of an animated image, of Richard Branson, who uh, runs Virgin uh, Studios, or Virgin, um, company Virgin, um, of him doing a presentation of Virgin Airlines. And he was a bit like one of these Star Trek figures, sort of uh, buzzing around and sort of edgy and all that, sort of. And I thought, well, that's great, but that's not really cutting edge as, as I would imagine. They said, no, but we are working on that. Come back in December and we'll show you what we've got. I went back last December, 2009, to this place, and they put me into a small room, much smaller than this, sat me on a little sofa in front of a, a stage with big velvet curtains on it, uh, opened it up, and I was staring at uh, a young guy and a, and, a, and a young girl, about mid-20s, and uh, I said, all right. And then, so they started dancing, they were, uh, modern dancing. And I found it incredible that, you know, they were, uh, putting this show on for me. Suddenly when they stopped after, after a few minutes, the, the, the man, the uh, guy there said, okay, tell us who's the real person and who's the fake one. I swear, I could not tell you who was real and who was fake. And I walked up to him, and I was actually looking behind them, and I was saying, well, you're kidding me, they're both real. I could see the hairs on the skin, the pores in the skin. Is that real? And uh, the shadows were cast, they were moving, and you could still see the reflections, the highlights, everything was correct in this, in this image. So I said, the lady's the fake one, uh, the real one. And they said, no, she's the fake one. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it. I got up on the stage, and I don't, you can't comprehend it until you actually do it. I put my arm through, <laughs> and I didn't see it from here to there. It was actually right through her body. It's the most amazing feeling to actually think, you know, you're putting your hand through somebody. But that's how realistic it was. And um, so uh, I was completely convinced that that's definitely the future of, of, of how we start to present things and um, really try to represent it as close and as accurately as we can. The, the process there is so much quicker than physically modeling a car where you might have a month to develop a model and something goes wrong in the paint or one of the modelers gets sick and he can't finish his work or uh, somebody gets upset and does something bad to your model at night, it, you know, those kind of things. Um, so anyways, uh, we're, we're off into that hologram direction right now. Uh, what I briefly want to mention is a few people who sort of, for me, are the true designers. They're more like design engineers or visioneers, that you could call them. And they're people who create designs that really help humanity and really create something that brings benefits without just redesigning an existing product. And, of course, Alexander Graham Bell, if you would ever thought back then that you could speak to people over long distances. Um, I doubt it, but uh, he, he believed it and he came out with what we have today. Um, of course, Steve Jobs, he's turned that into a real art. Um, I have an iPod at home. I've never used it. I bought it because I just love the looks of it. And uh, that shows you the, the power of design. Um, this here is a guy named James Dyson. He's English and he's uh, one of the most creative inventor designers on the market today. He's, this here is not even his newest project, project here. You're looking at a loop with a cylinder on the bottom of it and that is actually a fan. It's a bladeless fan. Air will come in along that one of those edges of the ring on the other side at at a certain speed, and it takes it out 15 times faster than it do does uh, when it comes in. And so it's a bladeless fan, and you don't get that buffeting of the propellers or anything. It's completely silent. You can turn it any which way. It makes uh, the best uh, wind uh, feeling you could ever imagine. Um, Ross Lovegrove is probably my favorite product designer. He's uh, completely in tune with making innovative shapes and. Uh, really being very efficient in making light design uh, in, in ways that we never imagined possible to actually produce these type of um, sculptures for, for seats and things take an amazing amount of engineering and, and creative design, creative engineering to, to accomplish it. Frank Gehry is the only guy I know who can't draw who's as successful as I am. <laughs> he basically scribbles on paper and turns those scribbles into actual amazing buildings like the uh, uh, the, the um, Guggenheim Museum, for example, that you see underneath. Uh, amazing guy. Um, we started back on uh, horses. I'm going to really try to speed this up. So, uh, you know, this was our first mode of transportation, but it didn't work that well. So then we got into designing wheels and things that actually moved uh, by other means of propulsion. Then we decided to turn them into sort of uh, having an engine that would actually help us to move forward. This is the first car ever. Uh, designed by uh, Benz, or actually produced by Benz, um, and that's him uh, in the middle, actually definitely in the middle. Uh, then Henry Ford helped us out by actually being able to turn these cars into something that everyday people could uh, use and uh, through the uh, assembly line production methods that uh, came into, into use then. 
And then we started getting into real design, uh, more artistic, much more uh, turning things into rolling sculptures, art on wheels. This for me is one of the most beautiful cars in the world ever, uh, Figoni Falacci. And then we started getting a bit crazy and uh, mm -hmm. I think um, they started really uh, smoking the wrong stuff here, but actually it's beautiful in the sense that they started taking influences from uh, aviation and a lot of different other types of design and uh, creating cars that were much more dramatic than ever before. Then we started getting into uh, real beautiful sensual design. I'm a real uh, fanatic about, about these type of uh, cars, not, not so much from the sensualness, but from the timelessness of it. If you design something that's sensual and very natural looking, it's probably because you know, it's been influenced by shapes that have been influenced or, or, or evolved through evolution, which is the most normal way to design there. They're not trends, they're actual um, efficient designs. Uh, then we lost it and started going for <laughs> safety, and we started building boxes that we thought were the most safe uh, things we could be in. And of course they were safe, but if you can imagine, somebody actually sat there and signed this car off and said it was beautiful. Um, maybe, but uh, today I, I, that car was not full of emotion or aesthetic emotion, it was just uh, engineering, uh, probably engineers designs. Then we started getting back into bringing a bit of fun back into motoring, so we did high performance, safety, and uh, emotional design, so uh, that's one of our cars. This is uh, what we thought was going to be the future, and we're still not there. I remember when I did my first futuristic car, when I did my internship at General Motors, um, I had to think from 1985, it was 1985, I had to think of 1994, and I did this car that today, back then I remember as a student, I said, like, this, they'll never build it, it's so futuristic. That car is so old in my eyes now. Um, but hopefully one day I think if we can get to that technology, uh, it'll still be a dream. We're going to be on wheels for a long time. But like I said, a lot of the technology that we're looking at today is for the automotive industry is coming from the aviation industry. Most of the military aircraft and the planes that are just going past the atmosphere and uh, that's going to change the whole future of travel. Briefly, the, the I was at the, uh, I had to do a keynote speech at the 2010 World Innovation Conference in Ibiza back in May, and they had the best creative directors of all the major companies around the world. One of them was the head of Virgin Galactica, who were going to be taking people up into space. Um, uh, what he's told me is going to happen very near, near in the future is that people are going to travel from London to Sydney in two hours. I said, that's physically impossible. He says, no, not if you go up an hour and a half and come back down for a half hour. Um, the world will turn and you'll just land pretty much where you took off from, which will be in Sydney. <laughs> this is what I consider the best design influence of anything in the world. It's basically looking back at nature and what makes these, these things so efficient. Um, if you ever saw a cheetah, not only in its you know, uh, most advantage, uh, most effective position of travel, but just the beauty of it. Fish, this fish here is actually much more uh, fast than a, than, a, than a cheetah. It's faster in water and there's a lot of principles that I can speak to about why it is faster, but very impressive. And the peregrine falcon, it can dive at over 200 miles an hour simply because of the way it positions its wings. It doesn't sweep back, it actually sweeps everything forward. And you can see modern aircraft technology going in that direction without, with, with forward swept wings and not rear swept wings, covering all their... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so where are we today? Um, sort of punch you back down over a computer. We haven't come that far. Um, so I think what's going to start happening now, if we're not careful, is we're going to start developing things that do the workforce. We're going to become incredibly much more lazy than we are today. But if you had one of these things running around your kitchen, I don't think you'd be very impressed. So you'd probably want a designer to come by and make this a much more attractive robot. So probably uh, we're going to start looking a bit more attractive. And for all you ladies out there, I think we'll also be able to include some men. The problem with this kind of relationship here is you get this. And if you get this, then we're going to be really in a, a, a creek without a paddle because uh, you know they could be ruling the world. So. We've got to be really careful about which way we're going in the future with design. And I think it's really important uh, that we start thinking outside the box and looking for new solutions as designers. Thank you very much.